The Lasso Life documentary is a film produced by Lasso Life to tell the story of five graduates of class 2021 and 2022. The five protagonists narrate how their dedication to academics, politics, and extracurricular activities while in school shaped their university experience. The five protagonists a subset of the larger neighbors the university and their story is a glimpse into the obstacles students of this great institution overcome to be great so they can proudly chant the Nassau in the tribe. We are Nassau. We are great. My name is Obunkaidi Yusufeke, Mr. Reliable, who is a graduate of Lagos State University. The most important habit I felt should be the first move I made when I entered school, because I had mentors like um, Shotunde and I was able to learn something, that you should go on a journey of self-discovery. So I've, the first thing I did when I came to last was to discover what actually works for me. And um, discovering that, I knew that it's not all about reading. It's about balancing your life. Balancing your academic life is something that has really helped me to um, achieve this feat. In that sense, when I say balancing, I mean when you can balance your financial life while in school, you can balance your academic life, including your social life and your spiritual life. When those things are balanced, I tell you, it will be much easier for you to learn and understand. Then the second thing I observed is most students, they read for exam. And that's something I did differently. I don't read because I want to pass exam. I want to write an exam. I read and just to understand so that whenever a question is thrown at me, I can always be in a right state of mind to answer any questions. Life is all about struggles. And from day one, I've always learned that um, problem will always occur. Challenges will always come your way. So most times when I struggle, I have a lot of things to run to. That's why I don't joke with people's attention. There's one thing I learned early enough. I'm able to meet people, liars with them, get ideas from people, and most importantly, in fact, that I can attribute a whole lot of, um, what's it called, a whole lot of my success to it. My ability to understand how to use the internet very well. As I am an ardent listener or follower of anything happening on YouTube, because I learn a lot on YouTube. I learn a lot with Google. And I'm a kind of person that loves new things. So I'm thrilled. Whenever something challenges me, I stop seeing it as a challenge and I start seeing it as what else does this thing want to teach me. You know, sometimes people feel this thing is a natural gift. No. Talent might be there, but it is not the major thing. It's just like Cristiano Ronaldo. He might be talented, but it is not really talent that took him to the level he is. It's more of understanding yourself, staying disciplined, and doing what works for you. So now, whenever I face, in fact, I face challenges almost every semester because you have something new to learn. So I had to take out time to, to ask questions and also I take out time to read. So whenever the challenge comes, I find a way to just overcome it. So it's more of my mindset helping me out. The mindset of always, okay, there will be challenge, there will be problem, you have to just overcome it. Just for instance, when I was contesting for the President Faculty of Management Sciences, for the longer period of time, I had no opponent. I was working, but you know, the, the political struggle then was not really tough because you have no challenge. Nobody is there to challenge. You felt you could go unopposed. And at a point, somebody came out against me, which happened to be my opponent, and this guy is quite popular. So it's now all about not just Mr. Reliable again. It's now a two-horse race with somebody that is uh, capable to, to take the mantle for me. 
it's a very great challenge and also it's a challenge for me with my academics and i also have my business running at the same time because presently i've registered my company so the challenge come how do i read how do i run my political campaign and also how do i make sure that all other things i'm doing does not fall below bar i sit down look at myself now i use human resource around me to achieve my goal so i think whenever challenge come the mindset of you willing to overcome that challenges is much better than any other thing your mindset so i believe that is one of the things that helped me overcome most of the challenge because i can categorically tell you there's challenges every step of the way okay it's all about you understanding what you really want in life uh it's difficult balancing school that is academics with business and also being a political gladiator it's not easy now i can say what helped me manage that properly is the fact that first of all i'm a management student i'm a business administration student as a dad and majorly what we do as a business administration student is to manage human resources sorry is to manage people not just human resources resources generally around you maximize it like um a scholar said he said your ability to be a good manager is your will and determination to use other people's resources to achieve a desired aim or goal there are some people they need to read four to five times before they understand that's some while for me i just need for for some i just need someone to explain when i listen to that person then i just go back take one or two things sleep over it in fact sometimes i prefer playing i love playing video games funny enough i love watching football i i engage in even social activity i watch football i don't spend so much time on the book i prefer i listen when i listen then i go ahead read maybe 30 minutes one hour that's the maximum amount of time i usually read per session so when i read i go ahead i relax that's why i always say balancing your life is what really worked for me because i love good food i love playing and i also want to do well it means i must do everything in appropriate or let me say in a proportional measure so that one doesn't overshadow the other and also on the aspect of business i think hmm, well i've suffered when i was young so that really motivated me because i come from a family where by we are seven in numbers my dad my mom and five children where by resources would never go around no matter how much your parents make and i had three brothers in school then university my parents we always want to offer but you can't offer what you don't have so that made me experience some level of in fact high level of deprivation high level of um sh- shortage of resources let me just use that word i think that's a better word shortage of resources so it's more like me living from hand to to mouth when i was very young and when you are in that position you you will be creative there's adversity introduces a man to himself when you are in a dangerous situation or in a very cunning situation you will find out things about yourself you never knew existed uh, some people don't know when i was very young i sold boiled egg and indomie well it's it's part of my growing up to show you how things were when i was younger so it has always motivated me to always want to get my hands on business i've always loved doing business so that exactly was more like an hobby when i grew up doing business becomes an hobby i just want to be creative now it's not just about doing business now to make money it's about doing business to affect life positively it's all about me trying to want to help others because i notice when i'm trying to help myself alone i don't do much because i feel oh if i'm alone i will be done most of my classmates know they can call me most in fact many of them call me most time what is this what is that many of these question i may not know it while sitting but immediately you ask because i want to satisfy your cravings cravings for knowledge i also just find one or two ways to understand the question you're asking and i give it back to you in that process i've learned from you 
but not directly from you indirectly because it is your inquisition that led me to learning something new and that thing now becomes something i understand so it's more like me wanting to help others achieve their goal it even make me remember a saying by napoleon eels he said in life if you want to achieve something help as much people as possible to achieve whatever they want to achieve and yours becomes automatic i think that formula really really works first of all your mindset and your belief system because it is what happens inward that reflects outward a lot of things are naturally difficult life itself is difficult I, I will not bother you by telling you it is easy it is not but your belief that someone has done it before I can do it nobody has done it before I will be the first to do it it's a very key belief that I think helped me Rufai Aziza Dolamu, a graduate of the Department of Biochemistry, Lagos State University. I am a parliamentarian. I am a podcaster. Cool. Politics was a very beautiful idea that was sold to me by the people I lived around. I was opportuned in my 100 level to live with comrades like Omomewa, Galado, Foli, and so many Lasso politicians like that. So every night we always sat, you know, in the night talking about Lasso politics. Omomewa was particularly enthusiastic about it, so he made me so interested in it. And of course, we all know that the time when Omomewa was actively participating in politics was a very interesting time in Lasso politics. So that was what sold the idea to me. And also meeting um, Rahman Said, Ambassador Rahman Said, is a, a, a graduate of biochemistry too. So while I was in school, he introduced me first into parliamentarian politics, into the parliament, and since then I have participated from 100 level to 400 level. I served in 100 level, I served four times in the parliament. So while serving at the department, I was opportune to serve in 200 level as the deputy speaker, and then in 300 level as the first female speaker for my department. Um, I served in the faculty and also at Lasusu, a two-time parliamentarian at Lasusu, serving across you know, different committees, just making sure that I can help in any way that I can. Um, definitely would have, um, because I would probably have participated more in public speaking events. I was once the faculty coordinator for sciences for LSUDS, that's Lasso Debate Society, but at the point I had to drop because it was taking too much. I was doing school academics, I was doing um, public speaking and then politics, it was, it was getting too much for me. So yes, of course my, my role in Lasso might have changed, my, um, what, the things I got into might have changed. Then also maybe I would have taken more tutorials, you know, taking academics more serious, but I wasn't trying to be the best graduating student of Lasso. I was just trying to graduate with a good degree, and thank God I graduated with a first class degree while participating actively in politics. So um, for me, definitely it would have changed if I had not gone into Lasso politics. And also I would have not met a lot of people that I was opportune to meet. And I'm sure that most of these people in the future, they owe me. They, <laughs> they owe me, so they will definitely be productive, uh, you know, be useful for me in the future. So I am definitely grateful that I ventured into politics. Um, Lasso politics, I would say, is a reflection of world politics, to be honest. Lasso is just a miniature of what actually goes on in the world. And the most interesting part of Lasso politics is during elections. You get to use most of the knowledge you learn while, you know, if you were serving as an executive member or especially a parliamentarian. I can speak from a parliamentarian angle because I didn't venture into anything executive all of my, you know, stay in Lasso. So, um, you know, in the house you, you learn you learn negotiation skills, you know, the power of communication. You learn how to be patronizing without sounding patronizing. You know how to buy people to your, to your thoughts. You know how to, you know, make people believe in what you do. So the best time to actually practice that is during elections where you have to, you know, work for your candidates, like we say in Lasso, you know, where you have to 
make sure that your candidates get delivered and all of that. So last week politics is entertaining. It can be very crazy. It can be frustrating. It could make or mar you. There are lots of people that have done last week politics. And you know, in some song that we'll sing, you say something like Mashes Walo, Mashes Walo. And then there are some other persons that would also always remember for the positive things they have done in Lasso. So, yes, Lasso politics is a place, or is really the experience generally is something that has made me believe in so many ideas, something that has you know, helped me be a better person, and something that has also taught me of what to be scared of, especially humans. Fear them. I am Brian Moribu Ibrahim, a graduate student of School of Transport, Transport Management and Operations. Now I've served as the 31st Las Lasso President, uh, two time honorable at the Lasso Sioux SPC. Sincerely, it was overwhelming and challenging. But then I had to put in my best not to soil my name and of course the student's interests. Because there are, there are times whereby you know, calamities will arise and all. But being a student leader, you just have to do your best to stay far of waters, especially with the states, the students, and the school authorities. The next thing for me after last politics is to venture into the real world politics and a career based journey. I intend to be the Minister of Transportation one day. That's why I'm still purchasing the politics line. And hopefully I get to serve at the uh, Lagos State House of Assembly as one of their essay on transportation one day. So that's why I'm trading my path. Politics and career all joined together. I'll be a professional in transport, professional in politics also. What extracurricular activities I, I was involved in and why I joined them. So I was involved in a, a number of things. I joined the Lasso Debate Society in 200 level. I was a member of the um, MSSN since like 100 level. Sort of instinctively located MSSN and then I joined them from 100 level. So that was how, you know, all the way to 400 level. But joining the Lasso Debate Society for me, it was sort of a pointer from someone. So I was in MSS and I attended a leadership training and then I presented the I, I presented the group findings to to the um, crowd. And then the facilitator said, Zainab, I think you should look more into public speaking. I think you should do more public speaking. And then I felt that was the first time I actually heard that phrase, public speaking. Of course we all know debating we all know, oh, you do class presentations, but public speaking, it was like a novel world. Then that was when I saw the um, publicity from the Lassie Debate Society that they were taking trainees, and I joined because they intended to train. Yes. <laughs> Yes, yes, extracurricular activities, I like to call them the positive distraction, right? They are a distraction. You need to face that. It's a truth. You, you need to accept that it's, it's a distraction. So they are positive distractions. I remember a particular time when I was on the committee during OBS administration. I was on the committee for planning the 30th anniversary, I think so. I was on the um, sponsorship committee. Right, and I was, you know, the sponsorship sponsorship committee is like the most important committee in any kind of any kind of planning committee. So it was like a very huge role, right? I was the secretary to the sponsorship committee. Imagine having to send letters, getting sponsors, you know, getting the money in, and all of that. And then we devised a strategy. It was a a trade fair. It was supposed to be the biggest trade fair ever held on Lasso, and we had external vendors, you know, external vendors. So it was like a hassle throughout. It was like a week long of a hassle. The, you know, getting vendors, getting payments, reconciling the names and the payments, assigning them to stands and all of that. I remember for three days, I missed classes. 
Imagine a first class student missing classes for three days. I was in agony. And I think at that point, I, I needed to just, you know, I took a step back after that event. I took a step back and I told myself, I need to prioritize. I need to, you know, focus on what exactly my focus was. So I think, yes, they affected at some point, but because I was able to step back, it didn't affect me too much. What did I gain from all these activities? My entire life, transformation, growth, um, people, very important people, but most importantly, experience. Because I mean, when you graduate, you can't just say, oh, I finished with a first class or, oh, I have a BSc. So what else? That's what they will ask you. So I think that those activities gave me the opportunity to sit down in front of um, any employer, even if you're not going to employ me, that's the, it's not by force of course, but the confidence to sit and explain exactly what I did. So it, it gave me that um, confidence here yeah, basically. So that's, that's why I would say confidence. I am a main artist with my family, Lactose Record Breaker, a log by me with Perfect CGP 5.0 from Faculty of Law Legal Case University. Okay, the fact that I did diploma in law at Lagos State University in the year 2016, 2018 session. So diploma in law is an 18 month program where you take compulsory law from 200, 300 to 500 level. So it's a weekend program and the entire weekday is left for you to decide, like to study really hard. So that particular experience took me. And I finished with 4.9 in diploma. So it was easy. Come to do direct entry now and making it rapid. That is really overwhelming. I'm, I'm, I'm impressed and I appreciate the public. Like this time was embracing academic experience. Strictly speaking, I really did not expect this kind of public acceptance. You get it. The day before this press conference, my staff and one of my friends were discussing and she was like, ah, when this result is released that you got it as CGS, you get a lot of money, a lot of recognition. And I was like, don't feel unnecessarily, I don't want to feel unnecessarily, I don't want to feel entitled. Because I understand that academic is not the same thing as entertaining. You get so I did not expect that the world would appreciate it as much as would be. And so it is overwhelming, but I really appreciate it. I mean to, I, I currently started developing interest in tech, okay, because the goal is to, 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 to specialize in a lot of tech, you get a lot of tech stuff. So my goal is to, if we do my master's and PhD, we have a lot of technology. In this time, I will currently be doing tech trainings in areas like software development, front and back age with this type. I'm not listening to the way say that. Literally everything I wanted to do in life, every one of my achievements, I've always been told, you know, it's impossible. But develop that sense of motivation from within. Sometimes people will not understand the drive. They won't have, they won't, they won't understand where you are coming from because you are a whole different person. You are unique to yourself. And there are certain goals that you alone understand the fact that you can actually accomplish it and how much that accomplishment you gain to you. So that's the first thing, don't listen to me. So if you have a goal that you think that you can work towards, work towards it. If it happens, if it doesn't, you move on to the next. And then, particularly to academic, I believe that students don't have that much relationship with lecturers in the sense that other than the lecture room, most students, that's the end of it. When they are done with lecture, they don't have any connection. And like lecturers are, I feel that lecturers are even better. Not all of them do, but they won't, they would always be willing to listen to me 
I have always been with this city. On my different days, to my friend that level low. I had every single time I had a visit. I had this, there's a particular question I find difficult, and I don't show it to reach out. The truth is, even if, even if one lecturer says, if you consistently keep looking, someone will give an answer to that question. And I tell you that that extra effort made a difference. There was a particular time in the criminal when I had well, criminal law, yes, criminal law question. Criminal law, I was reading criminal law, and there's this part I find very difficult to address. So I went to the faculty, saw the dean, the, the current the lecturer there was the dean, Professor F.A.R. Deniki, and it took working, we had to walk through to another faculty, faculty of, faculty of education. So we were both working through last school and he explained that course. I would have started back and relaxed. Because I know it was not a conditioning environment. I was literally running quite a lot fast. But in the course of development, yet then start the particular thing I find. And the question, and I mean, the that explanation assisted a particular question and answer. So imagine if I failed to do that. Another time, I remember missing my legal method lecture because of the similar situation and it helped. So sometimes the extra effort you make is all make good. If you're looking toward being perfect, you need to do go extra. Don't limit yourself to lectures in class. Don't limit yourself to one particular thing. Because different authorities will not write on the same thing 100%. So the more test books you, you, are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you study, the better for you. Online materials, you know, practical cases and all. And then, do not forget the God factor. Yeah, it's, it's extremely important. Yeah, it's, it's so important that you pray hard to, that God eases your journey. Yeah.